In the Middle East, Israel has extended a security arrangement with Dubai, keeping Israeli airlines flights to the United Arab Emirates running while an evasion the security dispute is negotiated. It warned of a potential crisis with the Gulf states unless the issue is resolved. Israel's Shin Bet Security Service has voiced concerns about arrangements at Dubai International Airport and says the three carriers would stop operating there if issue is unresolved. A Shin Bet statement aired by Israeli media on Monday said, quote, over the past few months, security disputes have emerged between competent bodies in Dubai and the Israeli aviation security system in a way that does not allow for the responsible enactment of security for Israeli aviation, end quote. The current arrangements were due to expire on Tuesday, but a senior Israeli official says the transport minister extended the deadline by about a month so the negotiations could continue. Dubai authorities have so far not commented on the issue. This is, coming, this is all coming at a time the UAE's National Council delegation is visiting the Israeli Knesset. And joining me virtually now to discuss these developments is an international affairs analyst, Kelechi Deka. Good to have you join us. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I, I really want us to focus on, on um, the very last part of that um, report story we just took. Um, the Israeli, sorry, the UAE National Council is now visiting um, the Israeli Knesset, and this is coming just few years after the uh, uh, a few years after the um, Abraham Accords, which was signed by UAE, um, the Morocco, Bahrain, and Sudan normalizing ties with Israel. Let's get your thought on this. Yeah, um, uh, basically, when you look at the uh, issues that uh, gave rise to the Abraham Accord, um, you will know it started uh, way before now. In 2015, Israel opened a diplomatic mission office in Abu Dhabi. That's the, um, the, the capital of the United Arab Emirates. And as at that time, the relationship between Israel and the United Arab Emirates, you know, started warming up. Because there are there are two things that kind of uh, 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 influenced that need for both Israel and the United Arab Emirates to come together. There, there's a policy that they termed shared threats and shared opportunities. And when you talk about the shared threats, you will know that the United Arab Emirates and Israel are within the countries that Iran identified as um, countries that it will want to eliminate. So when you have um, a common enemy, your enemy's enemy, um, it will be in your interest for your enemy's enemy to become your friend. So because of the threat posed by Iran, Israel and United Arab Emirates, even to Ernest and Saudi Arabia, started warming up relationships. Then also, you, when you talk about the shared opportunities, uh, you will discover that uh, what is happening in the United Arab Emirates, using Dubai as the pointer, is um, the plan to build a, a global financial center in Dubai. And, you know, you know they've been touting that Dubai is the center of the world. So they, they are building a global financial center. And you can't talk about building a global financial center in the 21st century without bringing in the country that is fully in control of finance, fintech innovations the country that is in control of cyber security globally, and that's Israel. And they know that, you know, working together between uh, um, Israel and the United Arab, uh, Arab Emirates not only provides a lot of um, security and defense when they are looking at how to counter a common enemy in Iran, it also helps in building a, a business opportunity. So that was the underlying factor that influenced the um, Abraham Accord. And that was why on Jan January 2021, Israel opened their embassy in Abu Dhabi, the capital of United Arab Emirates. And in May 2021, United Arab Emirates opened their own uh, embassy in, in, in Tel Aviv. And all these things dates back to the 2002 Arab Peace Initiative. Hmm. And it's interesting you talked about Iran, um, but before I get there, I just want to correct a statement I made earlier. It's actually one year 
after the Abraham Accords and not, not, not um, uh, a few years. But l let's get to the issue you raised, which is that of Iran, even though um, the UAE seems to be saying this is not about defense, this is not about security, this is not about politics, it is more about wider opportunities for the region. But we know that the threat posed by Iran seems to be a unifying force for all of these countries. Um, there was a discussion on the way um, to acquire the, uh, I think it's the sale of advanced Israeli air defense systems by the UAE from um, Israel and that will put which means that that, that will put um, Israeli's military hardware on the doorstep of Iran how how do Iran, Iran has raised concerns about about that but how do you see that playing out um, do you see a more aggressive Iran if that were to happen yeah um, the way it is now um, uh, Iran is not in a very good shape to be more aggressive than it is presently what is happening within the uh within russia and ukraine seems to have taken away the shine over what's happening presently at the middle east which ordinarily would have been a kind of a history making or epoch making event but now um the threat being posed by iran seems to have been subdued um, as a result of the developments in Russia, because you know Russia also has one leg in Iran and has another leg in in Israel. So basically, Israel will, Israel has um, a kind of what they call a, a watertight defense against Iranian missiles. So um, if uh, United Arab Emirates acquire those de air defense systems they will be in a better position and uh, you know to be able to withstand whatever threat iran poses you discover uh, you, you, as, you, as you are well aware um recently there have been some attacks from the from yemen from the Houthi rebels against united arab emirates and there are reports that some of the um air defense system that they were they used to counter those attacks came from israel there, there is a kind of a mutual relationship it kind of warms up Israel to a lot of other hardliner um, Middle East uh, Arab uh, Muslim countries. And on the second uh, 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 hand, it also gives them opportunity to have access to um, high-tech innovation, cyber security, and also give Israel, you know, the Jews control um, global financial system. So if you're, if you're dreaming or planning of setting up a global um, financial center, you, it is in your own interest to accommodate the, um, the Jewish interest. Mm. And um, when you mentioned the, the, Houthi, the Houthis um, attack on um, UAE, let's also note that that attack was carried out um, whilst the Israeli president, um, I think it's Isaac Herzog, who was visiting um, um, UAE at that time. So it also seems very specific because there was a visit by Israel to the UAE. Um, but you mentioned um, um, UAE. UAE has a very fairly uh, good relations with, with Iran. And how do you think that they can go about protection without antagonizing Iran? Bearing in mind that there is the issue around the Iran nuclear deal, which is still on the table, that has not been resolved. And you really don't want to give Iran the reason to say we are not going ahead, ahead with this deal. Yeah, um, I don't think Iran is not seeing UAE, you know, um, on the scale. Iran, you know, you know what Iran did when it names a lot of countries a kind of uh, axis, some axis of evil and stuff like that. Iran has a scale. Where it is rating UAE is different from where it is rating Israel. It is rating Israel at the same scale it is rating United States of America. So it sees Israel and United States of America as bigger threats than it sees UAE. But what UAE is trying to do is to go under the umbrella of the protection that uh, United Arab Emirates, uh, that Israel is going to give it, and by extension, the protection that also United States uh, gives it. Because, you know, um, the United States was kind of caught in the middle between the problems that United Arab Emirates had with Qatar earlier, but that's somehow resolved now. So UAE is looking at its economic interests first. And it knows that its uh, military interest protects its economic interest. Without a military interest that is strong enough 
um, to, uh, to give it uh, a kind of uh, uh, peace of mind, it will not be able to continue to pursue um, its economic interest. So uh, Iran is not seeing UAE as a major threat on the scale that is seeing Israel. So whatever is happening in UAE um, for the Iranians, it not at that scale. So Iranians uh, are focusing on how they engage United States and Israel and the and, and uh, Europe on one hand first before the other people. I will see how this um, normalization of ties continues and how it plays out for the wider region. Thank you so much for talking to us, International Affairs Analyst Kelechi Decker. It's my pleasure.